welcome everyone and we have new guests today who have who have joined and we are very happy to have them on board with us and we look forward to a, a really great uh, innings in the next forthcoming time eh? so i i am very happy to welcome professor amanat ali who is the guest uh, you know he's he is an authority on nutrition food and health and there is a very distinct correlation between the three which all of us know but we tend to uh, just put push it in the background or and sometimes we don't think much about it so it is very uh, scientific to know to have very uh, good insights about the relationship and to act accordingly in our day to day lives so i would request professor our ceo professor namal hussain to start with this session and prof welcome professor namal hussain Uh, thank you very much uh, professor pranam arora uh, the chair of uh, today's webinar series uh, professor alam the honorable speakers uh, for today's webinar professor amanat ali who will be delivering his research findings on what uh, should we eat to remain healthy and active uh, the program coordinator professor arora Uh, distinguished and strict family members distinguished guests re uh, respected participants administrators organizers of and strict webinar series families distinguished ladies and gentlemen assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh good morning good afternoon and good evening for those in the other parts of the world i welcome you to this important webinar for and for being with us this morning through a live virtual zoom link sitting at your geographical location for next an hour or so today we shall learn from professor ali how we should live healthy uh, what should we eat to be healthy what should be the daily life practices to be remaining healthy and that what exactly we want uh to be remaining in this world maybe forever we want to hear from professor ali and uh, what can bring as a healthy food in this current technological era without further delay i would request professor ali to start delivering his presentation by saying an uh, ayurvedic proverb when diet is wrong medicine is of no use when diet is correct medicine is of no need thank you so much professor ali thank you very much professor hussain and uh, i am going to have this presentation it was long awaited and uh, i wish that you will enjoy my presentation and uh, i hope that uh, it will be of interest to everyone because uh, what my topic is definitely is uh, of the interest to everyone i don't know how to share this my screen now with the, this uh, i have forgotten let me i am going to share my screen i hope that everyone can see it right now and uh, the topic definitely what i have selected as an introductory seminar Uh, is of a general interest to everyone what should we eat to remain healthy and active and uh, i will have uh, the outline of this my presentation uh, which i will share with you i will introduce what is food what is nutrition and what is the food and what is a healthy diet what is the difference between a food and a healthy diet so lifestyle and dietary habits and how they are going to have their impact on health implications diet and disease relationship then i will talk about the risk factors of non communicable and chronic diseases and uh, then i will talk about the energy balance obesity and chronic diseases in relation to of course the our dietary and lifestyle factors the at the last step i will talk about the strategies which you have to adopt in the prevention of obesity diabetes hypertension cancer and coronary heart disease uh, 
and then we'll make general recommendation about the healthy eating. So I will start with the saying from the Hippocrates that 2,500 years ago said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And also then I will say the statement from the Ibn Sina that there are no incurable diseases, only the lack of will. It is by itself a very important topic currently in the scenario of COVID-19, how we can boost our immunity by only our determination and will. Of course, definitely by adopting the different uh, dietary and lifestyle, healthy dietary and lifestyle factors. And then this second thing, which is say that there are no worthless herbs on only the lack of knowledge. We still don't know many of the properties of our foods, the herbs and other important foods, what they contain and what are their health benefits in that aspect. So what is food? Let us define about the food that it is any substance medically, we say, which the body can take in and digest and assimilate it that will enable us to grow, stay alive and maintain our health. Foods can come from various sources like plants, animals, insect, bacterial and fungal origin and provide the nutrients for the body's growth and maintenance. I will mention here that currently we are emphasizing a lot more on the insects, dried insects as a protein sources for the food. Food is culturally defined. Every culture defines the foods in its own way. What is considered a food in culture A may not be a food in culture B. I will give a simple example in that, that the pure vegan only eat the sources of food which are coming from the plant origins, whereas the other they are eating all type of animal as well as the vegetable forces. Then there are people who eat actually only seafoods. Some are selecting uh, meat and some people are, of course, eating meat, but not of specific types of animals. The meat coming from the animals uh, like pork, they don't eat. And similarly, also the animal is slaughtered and the meat processed in a proper way according to their religious beliefs and so on. So that means that every culture has a different definition of food and it is defined according to the cultural associations. But the food contains actually, the food contains nutrients, it provides energy, it provides many different substances, and what are these nutrients which are contained in food? These are the chemical substances that are used by the body for its growth, repair and maintenance, as, as well as to perform various other body functions to maintain the health. There are six main groups of nutrients. I will talk later on about this. In addition to these nutrients, the food contains also non-nutrients. These are called the chemical substances other than the six nutrients which are present in food and these may have some physiological or other functions. They can be the phytochemicals, they are called as bioactive components, zoo chemicals coming from the plants or from the animal food sources and they are of great interest in nutrition as they some of them act as antioxidants. Earlier days, we used to say about that, that some of these non-nutrients were acting as anti-nutritional factors. They were suppressing the digestive enzymes. They were suppressing the digestion and absorption of the nutrients. And we call them anti-nutrients. But nowadays, we are stressing them as a bioactive components, which act as antioxidants and provides many physiological functions. The six main classes of nutrients are the carbohydrates, lipids, protein, vitamins, minerals, and water. The carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins 
are called the macronutrients because we consume them in large quantities and definitely they provide us the energy and the building blocks for the body whereas the minerals and vitamins are termed as micronutrient because they are required only in minute quantities and they function as a regulator of the body processes so far they are the use and functions of these nutrients in the body occurs after they are digested absorbed and assimilated by the bodies nutrients from the foods after digestion and absorption are converted into energy and to various other useful body parts organs and they perform many other important functions i will have another seminar webinar later on about the digestive physiology of these foods and how they are ingested digested assimilated and excreted from the body it is a by itself a big topic on which we can talk definitely at some other time the vitamin minerals everyone knows about the vitamins about their activities about the minerals particularly these macro and micro minerals we are we require seven macro and 17 micro minerals i will not individually talk on these minerals at this stage but i will just say that they are important for the body so far there are many other minerals for which we do not know what their exact functions in the body are and definitely some of the minerals if they cross the limits of maximum limits of their intake they can be also produce the adverse effect there are 13 different vitamins in our diet and these 13 vitamins there are fat soluble vitamins there are water soluble vitamins we have four fat soluble vitamins which we term them as vitamin a d e and k and there are nine water soluble vitamins the b complex with eight vitamins and vitamin c which of course they have got different functions and at this stage i am not going to talk about it is another important topic on which we can uh, talk later on by sometimes then we have talked about the non nutrients which are contained in food why do we term them phytochemicals because most of these non nutrients we are they are when they are coming from the plant sources we call them phytochemicals these phytochemicals give color they give flavor to the foods they participates in the processes which enable the plants to grow also they provide plants with the protection against their insect and diseases and any other predators also and they protect the plant growth of definitely and they are required by the plant there are various types of these phytochemicals like sulfur containing phytochemicals which are present in cabbage broccoli cauliflower brussels sprouts and other vegetable sources which may help us in protecting against the different type of cancers and other antioxidants uh, working as an antioxidants and oxidative stress these phytochemicals and bioactive components of foods they play important role as antioxidant and most of you are very well aware about what antioxidants are what is oxidative stress definitely this is an again another area where we have to ponder upon a later in a details at sometimes later but today's talk i am just confining myself about the basic concept now let me make it one thing very clear there is no good or bad food eating fried chicken occasionally isn't going to affect healthy diet but eating fried food every day with no or little fruits and vegetable is a bad habit so that means it is not the food itself that can be termed as a good or as a bad component but it is the use of that which determines whether it is going to have the adverse effect or it is going to have the positive effect food is a basic need of humans and access to sufficient supply of safe nutritious food at all times that is needed for an active and healthy life 
we term it as a food security for um, every human being on this earth. The food insecurity occurs whenever there is no or insufficient availability of safe, nutritious food or the inability to acquire it in a socially acceptable way. I will make only a small data statement here that according to the recent World Health Organization report, 842 million people, one in eight in the world are suffering from food insecurity. And definitely it is an alarming situation and we have to work on it to provide the safe and nutritious food to everyone living on this earth. Now I will come to my own topic of defining the nutrition. What is nutrition actually? Most of the people think that nutrition is just ab all about losing weight or gaining weight. And if you see on this uh, uh, cartoon, so you, you are trying to lose weight. Ask us about your low calorie menus. We can help you with all your dietary concerns. It is not the right approach. The nutrition actually we define as study of nutrients in food and in the body and their relationship with health and disease. Or simply we can say that it is the study of human behavior in a relation to food. How we select the food, what type of food we select, how we eat it, how we consume it and how we definitely assimilate it. The nutrition answers the questions about your diet, your health, your eating behaviors, and so on. And this is not only losing weight. It is an applied science. Nutrition is comprised of many disciplines. And these overla overlapping disciplines, which constitute the science of nutrition, are generally, we say many, a few of them, biochemistry, chemistry, clinical medicine, epidemiology, food science, genetic, immunology, molecular biology, nutritional anthropology, physiology, psychology, and sociology. And very recently, of course, with the introduction of the uh, artificial intelligence, of course, the computer sciences, bioinformatic, computational biology, cell biology, neurobiology, oncology, pathology, and pharmacology, they are all overlapping. Nutri nutrition interacts with everyone. And definitely, it's, a, it's a, an applied science in terms of that. Nutrition in your life, how you eat it, is it diet is a mixture of foods that you eat. It is not the single food which you are going to eat. And there are many different types of foods which you eat every day. And these, there are two main aspects of your diet. What foods you eat and how much you eat. This is the most important. To lose or to maintain healthy weight, you need to pay attention on both these factors. What are you eating? How much you are eating? And that determines how you are going to maintain your body and your balance, our energy home, your status. The quality of diet is definitely going to affect your health and the risk of developing chronic diseases. What are these chronic diseases? We will define it at a later stage. We say that it is the long lasting diseases which are not curable. Of course, we cannot cure them, and, but we have to live with them. Poor nutrition can result, of course, both inadequate or excessive levels of nutrient intake. If you are eating less, it is going to have malnutrition or if you are going to have more, then you are going to increase the obesity and weight gain. For each nutrient, every individual has a range of optimal intake, everyone, that produces the best level for the cells and its body functions. If you go below or above these optimal intake ranges, then the associated impaired functions will appear. Either you will have a deficiency or you may have a toxicity of these nutrients uh, this, in this way. So it is very important to, I will stress on that, that the nutrition starts from the very first day of pregnancy. You have to start 
carrying the first 1000 days of the baby from the conception to after the birth to two years in that way. And malnutrition during the early growth and development stage can cause irreversible effects on the mental performance of the children. So there is an important aspect that we should start stressing on nutrition or healthy eating for the mothers as well as for the babies. And definitely, of course, as an adult stage, how you can be healthy and fit in your performance. Eight years ago back, we were just talking about the deficiency diseases. What type of nutrients are deficient in our diet? What diseases they are going to cause? And they were called as the deficiency diseases. For example, vitamin D deficiency was very common and it is still there. Vitamin D deficiency is very common, even in the sunshine countries also. Whereas uh, the, the niacin deficiency that was in during the 1940s, uh, the allegra that is going to cause the disease. But nowadays, during, in this current era, we, the current situation has totally changed. We are talking about the diseases of affluence. We have plenty of foods. And in, that has created also, we name it as the diseases of affluence. And they are obesity, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer. And if you look at the sensor, the people are going more for the pills and surgery once they become obese, rather than they go for having a lifestyle change in that way, their dietary and lifestyle changes so that they can work on their uh, hypertension, obesity and other chronic diseases. And if you see that the current scenario during the last things what have changed during the past few decades, it is the lifestyle and dietary patterns. What has changed now, this is just only a picture to show you about that, which way you have to go, whether you have to go for an healthy eating or for an unhealthy eating, whether you have to go for the exercise or, or for, for a, or a, and definitely a, a, this, a sedentary lifestyle. So if we see these changes in lifestyle and dietary habit have brought serious health implications. We, our lifestyle was active. Earlier days, we used to work very hard. And now we are going to have the sedentary lifestyle and we are having a physical inactivity. Even also the changes in dietary habits, we were in the earlier days, we were using the traditional naturally processed or unprocessed foods. Whereas currently we are going to have the Western style, unhealthy, ready-made and energy dense foods. And this shift in health related problems, which has brought us from the survival to lifestyle and diet related non-communicable or chronic diseases. And all these factors, changes in lifestyle, changes in dietary habits, these are the modifiable risk factors. They are under our control. I will talk about a little bit on the what are the modifiable life risk factors and what are the unmodifiable risk factors which we cannot change. And But these are definitely we can change from active, uh, from sedentary lifestyle to active lifestyle back and from the energy dense foods to traditionally natural and unprocessed foods. I will say we are what we eat. Of course, where we live, the air we breathe, our social interactions with the people, our lifestyle choices such as smoking, drinking, exercise, etc. Inherent metabolic and cellular activity. All these manipulates the biology encoded in our genes. We sometimes blame our genes too much, whereas definitely it is not the case. I will come back to that also. Of course, the genes have some impact on that. What is the secret of a healthy and productive life? I, this is, I want to share a secret with you now. 
there is no secret to a long and healthy life. I was reading a, a, a recent article about that, that if you increase your sitting time of daily sitting time, then you are going to have more disease rather than if you are going to have some activities, some physical exercise, then you can add a few years to your own life. Even also controlling your diet, you can do that. Of course, that is definitely a lot more uh, a subject to discuss about that. Health and longevity are affected by diet, lifestyle, environment, and genetics. These are the main factors. Your diet, your lifestyle, and the environmental and genetic conditions. Chronic diseases, of course, the diet and health lifestyle is in the environmental conditions there. And then they are the chronic diseases. These are the low, slow developing, long lasting diseases and may take many years to develop and they are not contagious. You cannot transmit these diseases from one person to another. It is within your own body, definitely. And you don't see them because as they pro progress slowly and gradually and at the end of 10, 20, 30 years, you feel that you are ending up with a chronic disease. They can be treated. Of course, you can treat them, but they cannot always be cured. So as I was talking about, there are the two main imp important factors and the studies have shown that the genes and the environment are associated with the development of cancer and other chronic diseases. And if you see this diagram, only 5 to 10 percent are the factors which uh, the genes affect only 5 to 10 percent of the diseases, whereas 90 to 95 percent are the environmental factors. And these are 90 to 95 percent uh, are the, for example, alcohol drinking, obesity, infectious diseases, tobacco, diet. And the diet is the biggest component in these environmental factors. 30 to 35 percent of the diet influences the progression or the prevention of the diseases. Now, let me make another statement that we are not born knowing what to eat. It has not been actually a complete coded in our genes that what should we eat? We are made free to select. We don't generally seek out the required amount of nutrient from foods which may or may be deficient, which may or may be excessive. So humans and the most animals will seek water and food, but not generally the best food. You seek food, you go for eating food when you feel hungry, but you do not have the built-in programming to select the best food unless they have learned how to eat a well-balanced diet, right? So hunger, satiety, and thirst centers are located in the primitive brain. Only the level of blood glucose sometimes gives us a clue and influences our hung hunger. All other influences are the learned behaviors. What makes us like or dislike? The strongest influence is the food preferences. That is the learned behavior from the parents or from the environment. Food preferences are shaped by memory. And definitely these memories are based on your culture, food preferences, what type of food tastes you good, smell, texture, color of the food. In the first instance, you smell the food, you see its texture, you see its color, and then you taste it, and then you like it, and that makes, that build up your preference. Then, second thing goes, comes to the nutritional knowledge and beliefs. What do you know about that food? The practical consideration then comes for that. That means, most, many of the people do not have the nutritional knowledge. They have certain beliefs but not have the nutritional knowledge about selecting the foods. Then there are many practical consideration. It depends on how costly this food is, how conveniently you can have it, the level of hunger, how much you have, and health status. 
If you are hungry, you will eat anything which is available in front of you. But if you are not hungry and you have plenty of choice, definitely you will be very choosy for in selecting the foods. The players sometimes also are associated with the memory of consuming the food. My elders have been eating this food and I am enjoying also the same food. My religious leaders have been eating these foods and I am enjoying this food. This food is not associated in their eating plan, so I am not. I am distancing it from them. So this is all about that liking that makes liking or disliking about the food. We reject food sometimes based on the, our experience that sometimes that brings is us discomfort, sense of guilt and unpleasant memory. I have eaten some food in some times which has created diarrhea to me, which has created constipated to me, which has created headache to me, or it was not pleasant. I didn't feel comfortable after eating that food. I will avoid that food. So this is, so of course, there are certain taste in inheritance, which we say that for example, the Asian people love to eat more salty foods as compared to the Caucasian people. But it, otherwise, it is all about in our memories, our liking and disliking, and that is from our culture, from our uh, memories. How important is the food choice? People usually select food, what is available. Definitely, you will make the choices what is available in front of you? If you select food with high fat and low in complex carbohydrate, the tendency of becoming fat, becoming obese is more and definitely getting the disease, it is becomes higher. The health status of a population changes for the better or worse as the diet changes for the better or the worse. So, it is important to select the nutrient-dense versus the energy-dense foods. I am introducing the new two new terminology. What are the nutrient-dense foods? What are the energy-dense foods? So I will say there is no magic stick for unhealthy eating. So definitely, if we have a magic stick, so the nutritionist could use that and can say, okay, eat only this thing which is healthy. Don't eat this thing which is unhealthy. So. We have to get the people to eat healthy and be more active. We have to teach them and we have to ask them to learn about what should they do about this thing. How should they learn? Healthy eating is a learned behavior. And definitely the people who said, I put it here, that eating food that tastes good are not good, are not good for you. Enjoy your meal. Always enjoy your meal. Eating a healthy diet should be enjoyable. You can have all types of food and you can enjoy all these two. But more grains, adding to more grains to your food, a daily diet, of course, you will develop taste for the whole grains, which are more healthy, providing more nutrients. And that is why that you are going to be healthier in that way. The statement someone has made, where there is a will, there is a way. If you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. And if you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. So that means you have to learn how to eat healthy, how to eat healthful foods, how to eat nutritious food, how to eat a balanced food, and how to avoid the unhealthy That's food. Bravo. Yes. Parents can be the role model for the children. Of course, as I said, that the so the parents can be the role model for children in making healthy dietary and lifestyle changes. Definitely, as I said earlier, that healthy eating is a learned behavior and the children learn from their parents. If they are eating healthy foods, definitely they will develop the memories of healthy eating and they will enjoy in future healthy eatings. So be mindful in selecting healthy and nutritious food. And of course, I will talk about 
the 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 diet plan how that uh, we were talking about the two terminologies what are the nutrient dense and what are the energy dense foods you have to select the nutrient dense foods rather than selecting the energy dense foods it is however it's a big challenge all processed foods are mostly nutrient dense foods and all natural foods coming from fresh from the farm are of course unprocessed foods are we call them they are nutrient dense foods because they have not been processed they have not been added and they have not been actu actually added other energy substances into that so that. i will give one example here and the example is what is the nutrient density of the foods if you have a cup of coca cola and if you have a cup of skim milk i will say which one you will select on the basis of the nutrient dense if you see the foods that provide multiple nutrients in appreciable amounts relative to the calories are considered the nutrient dense for example whole grains breads vegetables fruits lean meats etc they are in nutrient dense whereas the foods that provide an excess of calories and relatively low amount of nutrients are regarded as empty calorie foods for example soft drinks right candies sugars french fries cakes fats etc so if you see here in this picture the cola bottle what is going to provide you it is the calories only and it has no nutrients in that it's all the energy only whereas a cup of skim milk with the same amount of calories the color, the amount of calories in both of these are the same it provides you protein provides you vitamin a c b1 b2 b3 calcium and iron so that means it is a nutrient dense foods in that sense so you have to start selecting the nutrient dense foods i will give you an another example if you are making a good breakfast and you think you are enjoying your breakfast you must have the lower energy density breakfast rather than the high energy density breakfast your food choice will determine your health status energy or nutrient dense foods if you are having low energy density so again this this is the example the energy density is 1.1 kilocalories per gram of this food it contains many different type of foods in combination which provide you many of the nutrients which are required for your body functions and here you have a, the same cup of tea with two donuts and the energy density is 3.5 kilocalories per gram so that means you are having the same amount of energy they are all providing you both of these breakfast meals are going to provide you 500 kilo calories but one is more nutrient dense the other one is the energy dense so let's talk about a healthy diet a healthy diet it consists of a variety of foods which provide all the nutrients and calories that the body needs for its maximum performance and wellness you and once you have a healthy diet it enhances the quality of your life and provides you the comfort pleasure emotional satisfaction and helps to prevent the diseases so a healthy diet consists of a variety of foods which provides all the nutrients energy calories that the body needs of course enhances the quality in that way so it has the two components there are two main characteristic of a healthful diet it must be adequate and it should be a balanced one adequate means which we talked about that diet consisting of foods that together supply sufficient protein vitamins minerals and enough calories to meet a person's daily need for the energy whereas the balanced diet means the diet that provides neither too much nor too little of nutrients and other components of food fat and fiber healthy diets in different cultures is differently expressed foods that contribute to healthy diets in different countries 
For example, in Italian, you have the pasta with vegetables. In Thailand, you have rice noodles with vegetables. In Latin America and Mexican countries, you have maize-based dishes, dishes, arepas, tacos, tortillas, and various salsas. In the Pakistani, Indian, and Bangladeshi styles, you have the dal curry dishes with vegetables, chicken, biryani, and extra. So every culture has tried to develop the healthy diets, and they are definitely popular, of course, sometimes. The preparation and of healthy and nutritional meals, it is another big subject also. How should you prepare your food which remains healthy? Should you cook it too much? Should you cook it mild? Or should you cook it? It's uh, uh, as our processes are, we keep on cooking and cooking hours and hours long for different types of foods and some of the nutrients, particularly the vitamins are lost in that way by during the cooking process. So the thing is that the preparation of the meals and the food is also a very important aspect because during the preparation, you add many flavors and many, of course, taste generating uh, substances are produced. Healthy eating plate in Canada's food guide in 2021, the Canada has developed the food guide. And this food guide says that you should have the four portions of your plate and two portions must have plenty of vegetables and fruit. One, eat protein foods. They may come also from the various sources and definitely the one portion should contain whole grain foods and make water your drink of choice. Earlier they were saying also the milk, but now they have put it with the water, replaced more and more water also. So this is here. You have to see that are you going to have a healthy eating plate according to Canada's Food Guide 2021 or you are eating in a different way. Anyway, always make better healthy food choices. You are free to choose, of course, but you are not free from the consequences of your choice. Your choice will determine what the consequences from that food you are going to have. Now it is a barbecue season. It is summer here and everyone is barbecuing. It is another important topic on which I would like to have a different how should you barbecue, how should you avoid the issues related to the production of toxic substances during the barbecue, how the smoke is going to affect your food quality and what the consequences you can have if you are continuously eating the barbecue food which is more burnt, it is well done not the medium done and of course in that way so the choice is yours but you have to get ready for the consequences it is far about your choices in that way if you are striving for a healthy weight then you have to avoid energy dense and junk foods all these foods they are all energy dense foods they provide you for example chips, then you are going to eat more salt, more fat, more carbohydrates, more energy, and definitely they are, you are avoiding many of the nutrients which are essential for your daily functions in that way. So, you have to avoid empty calories. This is an important aspect. Once a while, maybe it's okay for the sake of uh, enjoyment, but Avoid the sugary drinks. They are not going to add anything other than the energy into your everyday diet. Be cautious. You are selecting enriched, fortified and processed food. You may have many foods on the market. You have many foods on the shelves in a supermarket which states, okay, these are the enriched and fortified with the additional uh, or the, the nutrient loss during the processing, right? And added 
more nutrients to into that but you have to be aware and you must be very careful in reading the food labels you must read food labels before selecting a food and eating it because these food labels provide you the nutritional facts they provide you who is going to make this food they have the different slogans it says no saturated fat no trans fat and no cholesterol right so but these health claims are associated with the general re research which has been done in relation to saturated fat which increase the cardiovascular diseases trans fat which are also associated with them and no cholesterol for heart diseases all right these are but it is not particularly for this very food uh, product actually you have to be careful in reading how much calories how much fat how much cholesterol and how much carbohydrates are the sodium amount these these are percentage daily values which are provided you must read your food labels by yourself in doing that weight management and physical activity together with healthy eating these are the key to success for a decent health right so as i said a recent study has indicated that if you are sitting long hours in a day you are going to be susceptible to the chronic diseases so you must be very active you must go out must have some activities and the components of course the water which we talk the sixth nutrient which we say it is an essential nutrient for body functions so consume enough of water always even if you are not thirsty you make your habit that you are going to have small quantities of waters at different intervals of the day because without water even the body cannot process the digested foods right the it cannot assimilate the nutrient absorbed from the digested foods so water is very important in all body functions and you must consume enough water and particularly in hot and weather in hot and humid weather where you need it even if if you feel or don't feel that way at the end i will give you a general strategies how you can prevent obesity diabetes hypertension cancer and coronary heart disease this is are the general guidelines you have to follow the dietary recommendations and you should avoid smoking number one you have to maintain healthy weight this is the second thing increase your physical activity all right you use more nutrient dense versus the energy dense foods natural unprocessed foods you should go you can you have to eat more fruits and vegetable i don't say that you should not eat red meat but you should limit the consumption of red meat of course you can have it you can enjoy it but you have a limit of course the use of alcohol it is not it is always uh, not, it is not good to have that less consumption of salty foods because excessive sodium intake can give you a problem associated with hypertension drink water coffee or tea and avoid the soft drink even if you are drinking coffee or tea take it without sugar don't overeat and don't use supplement even if you are offered a big buffet please have your selection for the healthy choices rather than unhealthy choices and don't eat too much at one time right. use healthy plant oils in moderation of course you can and avoid the so you can use healthy plant oils in moderation and cc so these are the general strategies which if you adopt you can prevent yourself against the development of this then the general recommendation are just eat breakfast every day eat a wide variety of foods every day not one type of food variety of foods every day choose water or milk instead of soft drink or juice 
most of the time. Choose foods high in fiber like whole grains, fruits and vegetables and eat when you are hungry. Stop when you are full and don't overeat. This is, of course, this, many of these uh, people follow this uh, as a religious obligation, but sometimes it is not. Don't use food to make yourself feel better when bored, sad, or upset. The people have the habit that when they are uh, feeling bored, when they are sad, when they are upset, either they eat too much or they don't eat sometimes. So this is there. So please control yourself in that way. Balance your food intake with your physical activity. You must have a moderate intensity aerobic activity, minimum of 20 minutes daily or 150 minutes on the weekly basis. This is the minimum. Of course, that means that you have to try to get more and more activity in that aspect. Thank you very much. This is all and I will appreciate your questions and I'm ready to answer any of the questions which you have in that. I hope that I have finished my presentation on time. It may be a little earlier or less. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We are so delighted. Yeah, you have so. told the truth uh, and this is the first and webinar uh, series. I'm so happy to see our participants from around the globe and mashallah you are talking the talk of the people in their heart everybody on this earth especially the people on eastern side when they reach beyond 50 and near about 60 you will see there is a bag plastic bag on their hand and i ask the question what is this this is medicine I went to visit to somewhere, so then one of my sisters came to me, very politely told, please let me know what the tablets you take before you eat and what the tablets you take after you eat. I said, what? I don't have any tablet. I don't do anything. No, no, everybody is taking care. This is what we are, our country and our culture. So whatever you told, this is, I think that, Everybody knows what is to be done, but unfortunately, people, they are not practicing. So practice is so important and uh, you have highlighted every religion gave a lot of solution of how to maintain health. Okay. So there's a proverb says that somebody earns money throughout his life and has spent all the money when he start getting sickness. So we should be very careful and your discussion step by step, it is so wonderful, liked it so much. It is fixing with the religion, the culture, the, the theory of uh, psychology and philosophy, everything. And I was all the time remembering why our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told, divide your stomach three parts. One part is for food, one for water, one empty, so that we can breathe. Just to remind a story, someone is competition to eat sweet meats. He ate so much, it came up to throat, and he is almost dying. The friend's relatives call a doctor. Doctor came, examined, and in his ear, push peering, can you please drink a little bit water? It will relieve you. He became so angry yes, from this that he jumped. It will, if I would have a place to drink a little bit water, okay. I would drink another sweet meat. You see, that means they are not careful enough. And the way you gave wonderful the, the, the division of food, what we should eat, what should be on our table. I'm so happy. Now, floor is open for uh, asking questions, please. Uh, I, I, am, I am very glad to see our participants, 23 participants from around the globe. <coughs> I know you might be having questions, so please ask questions to our expert, uh, who is, mashallah, I work with our dear brother, more than seven years, Sultan Kabul University, he's a professor, a renowned professor, having so many publications, mashallah, 
and sometimes if i call he has start uh, that means uh, heavy breath then i get i get scared are you okay she yes, says i am okay but i am walking subhanallah <laughs> so he is okay but he is walking that's why he is breathing like that so what what i'm trying to mean that this is practical this gentleman is still walking mile after mile allah bless you give you a very long life to get the knowledge from you how to live healthy on earth please thank you very much thank you very much uh, professor nur alam thank you for your kind words and uh, uh, definitely i am ready to answer any of the questions uh, from the audience and uh, i am happy that uh, you made it uh, to s- listen to me about this i was expecting that there may be many more people but it is the first time i think the people uh, once they listen from word of mouth then definitely the next seminar they will mo- join us um the, my name is uh, rana ahmed and uh, i am a professor of computer science and engineering at uh, american university of sharjah oh, in energy development well um Thank you very much Dr. Ramat Ali uh, for a very nice and informative presentation. Um I really enjoyed it. Uh I have a couple of quick questions. Uh these days we also hear about uh, genetically modified food. Um uh, and uh, of course uh, sometimes we don't have a control because you know people tell us that uh, you know the seeds are being uh, uh sort of manufactured by some big companies and they of course uh, uh sell these seeds to the farmers and the farmers cannot make seed out of those uh after the crops uh, is over and uh, of course in the past like 100 years back we didn't have this practice so what do you think of these uh, genetically modified food how it will going to affect our diets and nutrition in general Thank you very much uh, professor Rana and uh, asking that uh, burning questions about genetically modified food genetically modified organism and uh, of course we are bombarded with all uh, the genetically modified uh, things right now i am not a big fan of genetically modified foods but of course sometimes we see as uh, that they are becoming the part of our life right now soya bean for example corn also for example even also the 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 other crops also are coming as a genetically modified foods and these these are of course uh these genetically modified foods are propagated by multi billion uh, industries and once you purchase that seed and you plant and produce the food the next time you cannot save the seed from that production that is one of the you have to every year get the seed from these multi that means the the these these industries and you are dependent totally on them earlier the naturally produced foods were so that we used to produce the food and we used to save the seeds for the next plantation and we were having the naturally processed the genetic modification of the foods is always there the genetics has played a very important role but the these these were actually done on a smaller scale they were done uh, the of course uh, with the manual genetic and now it is uh, the in vitro genetic engineering which is going to take place we are adding the genes which can make the plants more disease resistant more salt resistant more the water resistant more heat resistant and it can sustain against the environmental conditions and that is what and also definitely it can give you the bigger produce we still have to wait for a long term because it is not overnight the min the studies which we they have conducted about these genetically modified food are limited one on the animals we have to see how they are going to affect over the in the longer run 
chemically defined the genetically modified food has no variability in their chemical composition and their nutritional value that's what the they usually claim but how they are going to affect our genes in the long term when we are going to consume these genetically modified food i am still really myself very much confused and i am looking the ways and outs maybe in the next generations we will see it also but we still we are we are not sure whether they are but they are available and of course the only thing is that they have to label it that it is a genetically modified product which they are selling the people have the choice whether they go and purchase it or not so that has made them actually safer in terms of what we say from the regulatory parameters i think uh, otherwise uh, uh, i i i'm not uh, i have no comments on that so far we are eating soya bean which is genetically modified coming from montana and the other companies and uh, we are eating corn we are eating uh, the oils of course this is uh, what we call it uh, the corn uh, the uh, the oil what we are having the cooking oils also then there are so many other food products which are coming but the only requirement is that uh, the legal requirement that the people have to label it and mention that this is a genetically modified food and it is your choice whether you go for it or not i cannot say what we consequence we are going to have we have to wait as many more years to see the consequences of these genetically modified food some of the foods like egg plants it was genetically modified egg plants and it was introduced in india and then it was withdrawn because it immediately produced the uh, adverse consequences so they have withdrawn it but uh, otherwise uh, the the things are going so far so good i hope that uh, i am in a position to do that but chemically sp spoken they they have uh, the same chemical composition even sometimes they are better in nutritional composition as compared to the natural foods okay thank you thank, thank you, you sir welcome thank you so much for this comprehensive answer that's although we are consuming these genetically modified foods and which may be nutritionally at par with the you know natural no. foods but we are still not sure as to what the impact it has on our you know longevity and you know on on the long term basis yes. uh, thank you sir so uh, i i i think professor jalal has a question professor jalal <laughs> Okay. Uh, and any more questions, please? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you can unmute, or uh, on behalf of him, if he he cannot unmute himself, he is asking. Uh, it's nice presentation. Uh, I have a question. How risk of canned food and processed food or frozen food? meaning what is the risk factor of uh, different type of processed food such as canned food or uh, other type of uh, let's say frozen food even yeah. uh, which we all is store in our freezer yeah uh, there are definitely no i i i understand now with that question also that is number one is the natural foods and once the natural foods comes to, uh, to your table actually it has gone through many of the processes from farm it is transported to the plants and where it is processed then it is processed according to maybe it is processed uh, in different ways it is uh, heat processing uh, or chemical uh, mechanical processing or chemical processing it can go also whereas the thing is that any step every step you are going to use certain parameters certain uh, type of uh, preservatives to make it more and more uh, available or uh, 
avoiding the deterioration of the food or it is there. So once you are going to have the processing, maybe it is a heat processing and uh, or cool processing, you are going to lose certain nutrients. So the best way is to consume the fresh food but if not possible then the frozen foods are the best options as compared to the processed food which is coming to your table in a packed form because there you have to add certain preservatives and these preservatives definitely have their own impact although these preservatives are all very well regulated and they never come in the such quantities that is going to harm and the limit is uh, uh, very much controlled by them and then you add also certain uh, the other ingredients into that. For example, salt is added, sugar is added to that, and the processed food are mostly having containing more salt, more sugar for as a preservatives, and they are going to add to your problems associated with the intake of salt and sugars in your diet from the processed foods. So it is very, as I said, as in my presentation, it is, it is best to have the unprocessed natural fresh foods, if not possible, then frozen foods are because they are less processed. They are not uh, uh, having added nutrients into that. And then you have to go and if you read the labels for the processed food, which is coming to your table in a packed form, that how much sodium extra you are going to consume, how much sugar you are extra going to consume, how much uh, trans fat you are extra going to consume. So you have to look for that. So it's very, it's easy to say that uh, definitely processed food should be avoided as much as possible, although we cannot avoid in the, the scenario, current scenario. So we have to limit our intake of processed food, in my opinion. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, Professor. Yes, sir. Yeah, what I'm trying to ask, you see, uh, it's very sad. We cook for four hours and eat for mm. four minutes. <laughs> yes. And in Europe, they cook for one hour and eat for four hours. So I remember that uh, you'll, you'll be highlighting that to me. I, I invited one guest at my house and my professor in Sweden when we were PhD. So my wife cooked a lot of curries and this gentleman from Bangladesh whom I invited also, so he did not take lunch. He joined us. So he is waiting when we should start food. So then my supervisor, he's sitting with his children and he is there, our guest from our country is there. So when we open the eating ceremony, within five minutes time he completely finished food and then my supervisor asking is he okay in Swedish language is he okay or he's sick he did not understand what asking actually he is okay but he might be very hungry so I want you to give a little bit highlight eating food in such a way how good for health please Yes, it's, it's really a very big question which you have uh, asked me about that. How should we uh, cook the foods and uh, what, how much time we should spend uh, on cooking it is there. Huh? Is it that the, thing, the same? You're mu you are muted. Our family takes time to cook the food. Yes. Hours and hours. Hours and hours, yes, of when course. We, when we sit to eat that food, we yes. finish with five minutes. Yes. We eat so quickly. Yes. So that means a quick eater of food. How yes. much good for health? That's what I'm asking. No, no. It, 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 I think that you must take time to eat the food. If you are eating quick, of course, number one, you are not processing the food according to to the, its requirement. You have to chew it properly. You have to masticate the food properly and then swallow the foods slowly in small portions. So, and definitely uh, you have to have 
the foods then it will be digested of course if you are eating too quick the enzymes which are responsible for the digestion of these foods and the other uh, uh, physiological uh, fluids which are added to that food during the processing mastication in the stomach and uh, the digestion process in the small intestine later on so then it requires time if you finish within few minutes then it is then you are not adding it proper so you are not going to digest it proper and that is the, i will advise you that you must take time if you are taking too much time to cook it you must also take a little more time to eat it properly slowly in small portions so that you can add plenty of saliva into this because as soon as you make moist it in the mouth with the saliva and then you process it number one it is easy to swallow and then when it ends up into the stomach then it is grinded there and then definitely there the hydrochloric acid and the pepsins are added to it and the food starts the first digestion process starts it and then the final digestion ends up in the small intestine so you have to take a little more time thank you so much thank you that is what my i mean to say thank you. some people of course one i will add i would like to add here that some people say that do not drink water during while you are eating of course definitely it is better to avoid too much water while you are eating either in the middle or just before eating or after one or two hours of eating so that the once you add more and more water you are going to make it more and more uh, the action of the enzymes will be thinner and thinner and lesser and lesser in that way so you have to avoid you can definitely have some water small sips of water if you want to swallow the food but not too much of water while you are eating the food thank you thank you yes, sir thank you sir for this explanation uh, we also have uh, our professor dr ritun kumar barua with us who is also an expert on food and nutrition sir welcome uh, and uh, sir would you like to add anything okay 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 we have the next question is mr hasnan please ask your question Good evening from Bangladesh and assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, I have uh, a question regarding eggs. Yes. In our country, we are in the habit of having eggs in different forms. Sometimes we have as a scrambled egg, sometimes fried, and sometimes uh, boiled. I just want to know which one is more beneficial for our health. Yes, uh, egg as itself is a beneficial. whatever the type you eat it is your choice whether you make an omelet whether you make a scramble whether you are going to have a, a boiled egg in that way it's not right so the overall the egg it is not going to change it is your choice of eating eggs the eggs has got its own nutritional uh, value so i i don't see it is your choice of eating how you prepare your eggs in which form you prepare and which form you prefer some would like to have the half boiled some like to have the full boiled some like to have in omelet form some like to have just only the scrambled eggs some others only the fried eggs so it's it's uh, up to you it's it's your choice i don't see that uh, that is going to affect the quality of the eggs and the nutritional contribution of the egg Uh, thank you uh, i think uh, professor atik rehman uh, has a question which you partially uh, answer professor ali for our audiences if you may elaborate on it the question was yeah. uh, microbial contamination can be a major issue with fresh vegetables so yes. uh, what normally we should do yeah the uh, the thing is that is there always salmonella that is uh, and e coli are the issues actually related to fresh vegetables once you are harvesting particularly the salad and the other one these type of uh, vegetables you cannot sometimes process you cannot cook the salads and so on that the only thing is that you have to properly clean them with fresh water 
to avoid it. And uh, otherwise, uh, the vegetables are mostly cooked, they are boiled, they are fried, and they are prepared in many different ways. And once they are cooked, definitely you can avoid the contamination. But uh, the vegetables which you cannot cook, or which you are not going to cook, they must be properly cleaned and washed and definitely should come from the area which is uh, salmonella and E. coli free area. That's why sometimes these uh, type of uh, salads are withdrawn and you should not keep it for a longer period of time because then they multiply very quickly. So this is uh, the most important aspect in that way. Otherwise, uh, there is no uh, definitely com microbial contamination if you are using the compost material for producing the vegetables. There are more chances that from these compost, you say that it is organically grown, but it is in other way around. You are going to add the contamination into that. So. Sometimes it's very difficult, so you have to clean it properly. And everything, whichever you are going to use, you should clean it. If you cannot peel, you must wash properly. This is otherwise the peeling removes the upper surface, and uh, you can avoid much of the contaminations and pollutions uh, impact on that environmental impact on that. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, please? Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello, yeah. I would like to uh, thank you for a nice presentation. Thank you very much. I would like to, yeah, I would like to know about fasting, autophagy. Yeah. What do you think about autophagy? He didn't mention about fasting, intermittent fasting or autophagy. Yeah, definitely. I didn't mention because definitely it is a big aspect by itself. The fasting uh, in every religion, you are going to have the fasting. In the modern scenario, you have uh, giving it a name of intermittent fasting. And uh, the uh, yes, then uh, later on, later the terminology of autophagy, of course, while you are fasting, definitely, then you are going to utilize the, your reserves. And that is there. It is a big topic. I can talk on that topic also sometimes uh, in another seminar on fasting, intermittent fasting, what is the best for health and how this is going to impact. But anyway, the fasting, one thing I must say that fasting in any form is going to have a beneficial effect on the body's physiological functions. And uh, you should be very careful. You should not go for long fasting. Even it has been avoided that a continuous fasting except the month of Ramadan in Islam also. They, where there is a 30 days fasting is mandatory for uh, every Muslim, uh, continuous fasting. Otherwise, it is said that only twice a week, once a week, or you have to leave one day and then fast and then next day you have to eat and then next day again fast. So that is there. That means continuous fasting is not. And the fasting has shown that any uh, the usually if you reduce the energy intake by 40%, you can add 10 more years to life. This is another important issue. For example, if your requirement for energy G intake is 2000 calories per day and you reduce it about 40% uh, of that but you definitely you will live with that with that you can add to your uh, age fasting has been proven uh, in many of the studies that it leads to longevity I will talk on that, but it is uh, really at this stage, uh, my intention was not to go on the fasting. It was just the introduction of food and nutrition. What is there? What are the components of the food? And what are the composition? What is the composition of a healthy diet? And uh, what is adequate and a balanced diet? And how you can uh, select the food? And uh, as it is a learned behavior, how you learn and how you make your decisions about the selecting the healthy food. That was my main intention in this seminar. Thank you. My another question. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. 
if someone become ill for their wrong foods yes wrong habits uh, how can you make them cure yeah. using your lifestyle and healthy food is food how yeah very simple actually if you become ill definitely that means i said as i said actually that the chronic diseases uh, the long lasting diseases they are not curable you can treat them but they are not curable so you have to slowly and gradually change your lifestyle and dietary habits and start eating the foods which are going to have the adverse effect on your body uh, the nutrient dense rather than the energy dense foods so and only way if you are having the hypertension start eating the foods which are giving you less sodium contribution so that is one high fiber content no saturated fats into that and trans fats into that so that is the way only you have to make a long scenario this this is there is no actually hard and fast uh, treatment plan in that way only just because these diseases are created over the years and years and years right it they, they take long time so you don't expect that they will be cured overnight so you can reduce them you can prevent them but you cannot cure them this is the issue there is a, there is again again another interesting uh, research which is coming up now it is that the uh, diabetes definitely it is uh, it's uh, going to be a major disease now in the world and uh, pre diabetic condition you can reverse the pre diabetic condition by just changing your lifestyle and dietary habits and even full blown diabetes there are some studies which indicate that even the full blown study uh, diabetes can be controlled by avoiding the uh, uh, the the nutritional uh, by making some good nutritional strategies and avoiding certain foods and using the healthy life and lifestyle habit and fasting is one of them Thank you, sir, for such an enlightening presentation and Thank such you. insightful answers. We are really grateful to you for coming here, and it it is a very uh, knowledgeable session where we can continue still for a very long time, because there are so many th threads that can follow up from here. Uh, but for lack of time, uh, I would express my gratitude to you and uh, and request. professor in amal husain to to talk to everyone thank you very much uh, again uh, professor aurora and special thanks uh, and uh, special uh, honor from uh, ansric on behalf of all family members to professor ali uh, so we have uh, two announcement uh, i would appreciate all the participants if you keep your eyes on our webinar series at ansric in our conference uh, website uh, we have an upcoming uh, webinar which is also very interesting uh, will be offered by our uh, vice president adk division acquisition dissemination uh, of knowledge division professor uh, wajid khan uh his uh, webinar series would be on uh, pain management uh on june 30th this month and another uh, webinar uh, i will be delivering need of july uh, on how to uh, write a high impact research article in the scientific uh, journal uh, for the scientific community people so i welcome all of you if there is a possibility you join with these two upcoming webinar series thank you very much thank you sir uh, i would request our vice president professor noor alam to uh, to share a few words with us sir you are muted thank you pono thanks for your wonderful uh, this organize organizing this meeting i am it is just a pleasure to chair this wonderful session of webinar 
uh, as I told you that uh, we should be always careful about the food habit. Uh, and I know that unfortunately we finish our life when we near about 60. And European people, they start their life when they come near 60. So this is the difference. It's, uh, I, I found this is because of the uh, food habit. So it's a wonderful talk. I appreciate each and every word that you talk to us. Uh, and I'm grateful that many of our loving ones attended and you listened. And if these important talks give benefit to your life, uh, we thank God Almighty that we have attained something. So please take care and stay safe and take care of health. Thank you very so, much. With all these few words, I want to conclude our today's webinar. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your motivating words. Your words are always an inspiration to all of us. And because they come from experience, we all benefit from them. Uh, I would express my gratitude to, for, to Professor Amanat Ali for joining us and giving such an insightful session. I would just retreat what he has stated in the session for everybody's uh, knowledge, uh, you know, understanding and just maybe so that we can apply it in a better way. Uh, sir, as you said, the, that there are so many herbs and we don't know about them much, but there is a hub for every disease that we should be able to use. And I think we will use our future follow-up sessions on particularly on specific subjects. And you, what you explained about antioxidants, bioactive components, and the quality of diet and lifestyle changes, and how chronic diseases can be treated but not cured. So we have to manage is, is really very revealing. And stress is also one of the factors which affects our diet and health and how food uh, you know, choices are influenced by our beliefs, but not the correct knowledge sometimes. So since uh, we, we just keep on doing it uh, on, on an unconscious uh, be, you know, level without actually scientifically applying our knowledge, although we have knowledge, but sometimes we don't apply it for the making food, right food choices. So this is very important that you discussed and the, how you discussed about nutrient dense foods and energy dense foods, we have to make the right choices. And you, you introduced uh, nutritional anthropology, which was a new uh, subject for me. And, and we will we'll, we'll, we'll ask you in future sessions what it means actually. And, and you stated that frequency of food is important what we eat once may not be important but how we, we make what we make habit out of it is very important so that will decide our choices you very uh, profoundly explained the role of micronutrients in our diet choices and there are some minerals that we do not know of Th that is also an uh, you know research based revelation which i did not know earlier then the role of phytochemicals in protecting us from maybe cancer types of diseases so this is uh, we are really thankful to you sir for holding such uh, insightful sessions and we will um, make follow-up uh, you know sessions on these particular specific subjects with you sir and we will all of us will benefit from your lectures thank you so much for joining us sir. thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present my ideas on this food and nutrition. And uh, inshallah, I hope that uh, in future we will have more talks on the topic. And uh, I will address the questions which has been raised during the discussion here and uh, in the other webinars. Thank you, sir. Thank so, you. sir. Uh, sir uh, Professor Alam, is yeah, there anything we, else? That we, with, with, all the, with, with all those good words, good words, mashallah. Uh, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Give you a long life and excellent health. Thank you. Give, give us tawfiq to follow what you told. And all these are from modern science, from religion, from all other aspects you talked. 
we are very much grateful to you and Sikh is grateful to you and your family. Uh, and uh, thanks to our CEO who kindly arranging all these uh, wonderful sessions. Uh, as you know, it is a short time. Many are not used to webinar. So in future, we are going to get more participants to join. I know I understand that many of us, suppose now the next course, which will be talking about the research, this will be on a specific person, what our CEO will be talking. A general level of people might not understand what he was talking about. So topic to topic, things dif will differ. So that a layman who is not aware of this, uh, or is not attached with education, very much attached with food, because every day they are eating. So that's why it will differ from person to person, topics to topics, nothing to get worried or frustrated. Even if we, if we can reach even a single person with our good words or activities, and that is our success. May God bless you. Thank you so much. And thanks to Aurora from Delhi. And it's very hot there while we are suffering mm -hmm. for because of the flood and water. Millions and millions of people are stunned. They are suffering. They lost their home, the house, and then all these properties and animals, and many children and boys, they died. So we all wish all the best uh, to get rid of the natural calamity on their side of India and Bangladesh. And we wish you all the best with this. I want to conclude the seminar. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.